All right, I wanna do something fun for this video. Let's contrast a Kamala rally and a Trump rally. We'll pull two clips from each and we'll jump back and forth one at a time to contrast the differences in substance and speaking ability, overall message, what policies they're speaking about, starting with, of course, the good guys. And as always, we'll jump in after with the needed context. Stop for a second, let me, let me just say something. Let me just say something. We are fighting for a democracy. Everyone has a right and should have their voices heard. I am speaking now, but on the subject, I will say this. The president and I are working around the clock. We've got to get a hostage deal done and get a ceasefire done now. This is one of the most pressing issues in America right now. Over 60% of Americans want this genocide to be brought to an end. Almost 80% under 30 support a complete arms embargo against Israel until it happens. And Kamala is addressing the protesters in the crowd who are calling for it. I will say the Biden administration by far hasn't done enough, but it's headed up by Biden, who throughout his career has been the most far right Democrat on Israel. He was the only one who said that he'd send unconditional aid. He worked to undermine the Obama administration with the Iranian deal and these kinds of things because he has this, this ideological attraction to Israel that is unbreakable. He's unmovable on that. But Kamala, just by denomination of being a normal Democrat, is demonstrably more movable on this issue than Biden. I think she will actually fight for a ceasefire. And there's proof in the pudding as well. I mean, Biden's aides who have quit under his like immovable position on Israel have said that they would come back to work for Kamala because she's much more empathetic to the issue. She's stood up to Netanyahu already and she's enlisted Obama's foreign advisor rather than Biden, Obama's foreign advisor who helped directly with the Iran nuclear deal, which is probably the best thing that Obama got done as president. And that was against the wishes of Israel, by the way, who wanted anti-Iranian policies, not normalization. So that alone is a massive step in the right direction. Direction. And the fact that she's willing to speak to the voices of those who were unheard by Biden is also huge. Now, let's contrast this with what Trump is talking about at his rallies. I saw her make a speech. It was so bad. And after they get off, this was one of the greatest performances we've ever seen in our country. With me, I make a speech. I speak for two hours. Everybody loves it. I got thousands of people, by the way, outside trying to get in. I never, they never said Trump's a great speaker. I don't even want that. But I must be a great speaker, right? I just wanted to start out by saying real quick, Kamala has been selling out arenas, tens of thousands of people with thousands also waiting outside. While we've shown numerous Trump rallies with empty seats recently, by that measure of crowd size that he's talking about, that would make Kamala a great speaker and better than him. But the contrast couldn't be clearer in what we're actually trying to point out there's no policies being discussed by Trump. He's just talking about himself, giving himself compliments, being narcissistic and juvenilely insulting the other side, like recess level insults. And these are the issues that Americans are supposed to care about? Does anybody care if Trump is a great speaker or not? You think that's what's pressing the middle class families at their uh, dinner tables? People who support Harris do so for the love of the country and the hope of its future. People who support Trump do so for their love of Trump. It's pretty obvious. Now, on to the next clip of Harris. And unlike Donald Trump, I will always put the middle class and working class families first. from the middle class. I know what I'm talking about. Listen to the energy that is in this crowd. I cover Trump rallies regularly. I see the good and the bad alike, and it hasn't been like this for him in a long time, maybe not at all during his 2024 campaign. And she is exactly right in what she's saying here. Trump coming from a corporate lifestyle, being born into a millionaire family, will always put them first. That's why he made corporate tax cuts permanent. That's why he made the top 1% tax cuts permanent, but those for the working class were temporary. That's 
That's why he puts more cuts in for higher income brackets than the lower. That's why he puts income restrictions on things like child tax credits so lower and middle class families get cut out of them, but there's no ceiling so rich families can benefit from them. That's why most of the wage growth he saw in his administration was concentrated at the top. Middle class income growth decreased under him from where it was under Obama because we know who he prioritizes. While Biden Harris built from the middle out, grew wages and jobs for the middle class. They cut child poverty in half. They took income out of the requirements for the child tax credit. And why Harris herself plans to build on that with endless ways to build an opportunity economy that works for middle and lower income families. Now again, let's contrast this with what Donald Trump is talking about. President Trump and I are proud to be the most pro-worker Republican ticket in history. And I wanna talk about why we're fighting for working people, why we're gonna fight for unions and non-union alike. Oh, wait, my bad, guys. That's just yet another clip of Trump's VP getting booed out of the building for trying to lie to a firefighter's union as if Trump and him are actually pro-labor and pro-union when, I mean, anyone knows that they're not. I must have hit the wrong button, though. That's not the clip that I was trying to play. I'm sorry. Here is the Trump clip. Men in women's sports. You see the boxing in the Olympics? Two transitioned people. They transitioned from men to women, did you see? fighting a young, beautiful Italian boxer, top boxer. They thought big things from her. And then, bing, I left you up, just a jab. She go, whoa, what? I just got hit with a horse. Again, bing. She said, I'm out. Again, Trump really discussing the issues that middle and lower income Americans really care about. You know, the trans sports issue that affects all of 13 people. But he's also just lying about it here. Amon Khalif, who he's speaking of, is cisgender. She is a woman. She was born a woman. She's not trans and doesn't identify as intersex either, by the way. The whole thing comes from unsubstantiated claims from the IBA, who has had a multitude of controversies and a history of lying in the past, so much so that they are decertified as a governing body and not recognized, recognized as such by any reputable organization. To this day, they've put forth zero evidence of the claim that they made. Amon competed in the 2021 Tokyo Olympics as well, by the way, um, qualified and lost. So she's nine and five, like she's lost five times. It's not like she's some unbeatable man machine that women just can't stand against. And the IOC, the actual reputable governing body in this situation, claims that she was well within their guidelines to perform. Claiming someone is trans when they're not just to span spread transphobia is kind of wild kind of weird, might I add, especially considering that she comes from Algeria, which has transgenderism and anything same sex banned. So why would they send a trans athlete to the Olympics? It really makes no sense. It falls under the least bit of scrutiny, like most of the things that Trump says. And I, I want to add, if you're wondering why I showed these clips of Trump and not Trump, you know, discussing policy and goals, it's because he doesn't talk about policy. These are the kind of things that take up his rallies. At no point in this entire speech did he bring up any of his policies. No agenda goals, no solutions. He didn't talk about them one single time. It's all fear mongering and propping himself up while just like attacking the other side with recess level insults. So there is the contrast. I'll leave it to you guys to decide who you think seems more presidential. <laughs>